Hey YouTube, I wanted to show about the generator and how I made this power distribution panel for it. This is so you can run more than just the four standard outlets. This plugs in with the standard 240 volt plug that most generators have. And basically all I've done is I've split the two individual 120 volt legs into this breaker. This is actually just a disconnect switch. And they come out individually here. So one of these goes to this outlet bank here. And the other one goes to this. These are 15 amps a piece. You could put a total of 15 amps on there for combined of 30 amps for the whole thing. This is 10 gauge wire. There's 20 feet of it. So I can have the generator outside chained to the deck. Run this cable in and have this actually inside. Although I did design it to be actually rainproof. And I just have the cover off this so you can see it. So you have one side of the 240 volt, which is 120 volt, coming in here, and it leaves down through here. Other side comes in here, out through there. The neutral is tied together, and the way I did this is I took a split bolt connector, which I actually have one over here on the workbench. I can show you if you're not familiar with what that is. It's a little connector such as this. And you put the wires in there and then tighten this nut down and that closes them in there. These you torque to about 80 inch pounds. And I use splicers tape, which is a self-vulcanizing tape. It's really sticky when it comes in contact with itself. Wrap that around the connection, doubled it over so there's no copper exposed, and then wrapped it with standard electrical tape. Because this is a floating neutral generator, you can't... You don't want the neutral to be attached in with the ground like you normally would. So you get the ground down here on the ground bus bar and you can see I twisted them together and they're all torqued down and this is clamped in with strain relief. So that's really all it is, is it splits off both of the 120 legs of the 240 volt circuit. So you can have this whole box inside Although, like I said, it is rainproof, so this is designed to be outside, but I plan on keeping this part inside, having the generator outside, obviously, because you don't want to have a small engine running in your house, because that's a good way to get carbon monoxide poisoning. And then you have enough cable to run it through the little dog door over there, which isn't used anymore. So that's really all there is to it. Just a simple way to distribute the power for smaller loads that you'd be running in the house, like in the summertime, a few fans, some lights, maybe be able to keep the refrigerator on. You just need to calculate what you're plugging into it and make sure you don't exceed 15 amps per side, 15 amps here, 15 amps here, 30 total. So, and the reason this is just a disconnect is because the generator actually has built-in circuit breakers here. And if you're going to build one of these or something similar, always turn the power off at this switch or if your generator has a main switch you can use that too before shutting down the generator and shut your loads off before you start the generator and then kick it back on so that's really all there is to it it's pretty simple and just make sure your connections are really tight you don't want your stuff coming loose and causing a short or to overheat so make sure your ground is really tight and these with this stranded wire you need to fold it over to put it into these screw terminals because if you do not it may not make proper contact in there and be sure and grab it and really pull on it because if it comes out or if it feels like it's loose you don't want that for sure let me make sure it's really tight tighten them down good it's very important and these outlets are just wired together like you would standard like you'd do that in a regular two gang outlet box but that's all there is to it thanks for watching